I mean, I'm just like a kid. I'm just a high schooler who's trying to figure myself out and find my place. I wouldn't be organizing and I wouldn't be doing this and I wouldn't be sacrificing so much if it weren't so urgent. Last summer, at the age of 15, Jamie Margolin posted a message to Instagram. If we have a youth march on Washington, we can change the game in the climate crisis. It got a few likes. She also got a DM. Let's do it. I was the first one that DM'd her and we got connected. She lives in Baltimore, I live in Seattle, and we became like best friends. It was an idea that had been on Jamie's mind for a while. Seeing the Women's March, watching a doc on the youth marches in the Civil Rights Movement. And so they started. Hashtag Youth March on Washington. Jamie in Seattle, Nadia in Baltimore, Madeline in New Jersey, Xanagy in Connecticut. We work over the internet and we're working to put together a um, student climate march and lobby day in DC this summer. Why we're called Zero Hour and why this is our logo is because it's zero hour to act on climate change. There's no more time, there's no more time to wait, there's no more time to deal with it later. This is it. interview today and I had another thing today and then I had this call. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> it's just been non-stop work on my computer, on my phone, calling people, texting people, emailing people, working, social media, reaching out, more calls. It's, it's ridiculous. I should be able to just like hang out with my friends this summer. By doing something like this, you're going to not have a carefree, easy, happy-go-lucky teenage experience that you would normally have, but I don't really think it's, that's going to hurt her in the future. I think it's a good thing that she's done this. Yep. <laughs> we sacrifice also. Unfortunately, I feel like I'm losing my little girl. She's working all the time. We don't have time for that. But and we never thought we'd have this kind of kid. No. We just thought, no. oh, you know, you're having a kid, I'll do that. Okay, we took, you know, he's little, okay, let's learn how to play ballet. She did ballet, right? She did everything. Swimming, you gotta teach her how to swim. I remember in, what, four, five years, she said, Mama, I need to go to the library. I said, oh, yeah, she what you want to do? She goes and choose the books, and she teaches herself almost everything. I think she inherited that from you, from being persistent, because you're very persistent. Oh, yeah. You never stop until you solve a problem, like some math problems. Remember, she'd have a math problem <laughs> in her school. We couldn't figure it out. And you would never stop. you keep trying to figure it out. Figure it out, yeah. And like hours would pass. And go, I'm tired. Let's go to sleep. You're <laughs> still trying to figure it out. I think she inherited that persistent trait from her mom. One thing that I'm a little worried about is that, like, we have this march. And, like, you and Jair have the connection with all of these youth. And then how do we still have these networks? With other issues, the media covers them and there's already a sense of national urgency. It's much easier to mobilize people when they're already feeling like, oh my god, I need to do something about this issue. So all of this leads to a lack of national sense of urgency around the climate crisis. I really don't want the, the outcome of the march to be like, wow, those kids are amazing, that's so cool that they did that. It literally should be a wake-up call. The kids are marching and organizing and lobbying and suing and doing everything that we can and giving up everything, giving up time with our families and time to have fun and sleep. That should really scare people. like three days, four days out from the march and it's like here and we're all in the same house. <laughs> I thought, I thought you were doing that. I was like, hey everybody. We are young people, we're gonna be yes. voting. Yes. And we can really make it clear that we are gonna be voting for people who are looking after our future. Yes. We only met all of each other like last week, so. So the fact that we all were just connected through a computer in an empty room was just kind of lonely at times. All of this work, there's like the fear of like, will it matter? Will it add up? Will this work? Like, there's always that fear. We're just like staying up, eating popsicles, talking, yeah. working together, and just, yeah. it's just really fun. And I kind of am dreading when this is over, like not being able to see anyone for like 
months and months. months it's just, I'm not, I'm not ready. <laughs> So many moments along this process within this year where I felt like it was falling apart and it wasn't going to happen. We just kept working so hard. Like I cannot emphasize enough how hard everyone is working. My family, I think they just think I sit in a room all day, like on calls. They know they know what I, that we're doing, and and so I literally just come out for dinner, maybe watch like one episode of Bob's Burgers, and like and like Parks and Rec. <laughs> that's it. One and day then, at a time. Yeah, and then I go back into my room and and do my work. So they don't get to see me often, and I think that's kind of sad for them. And I'm really kind of sad that I've been spending less time with them. Same. Yeah. This is zero hour to act on climate change. People are already dying, being displaced, um, losing their health to this issue. Like, I'm 16, I'm under voting age, so we the youth did not decide to create this problem, but we get to pay the biggest consequences for it. What time is it? Zero! Let's make the whole city hear us. What time is it to act on climate change? on the National Mall with the, the Capitol building behind us and I really was like envisioning this so it's really crazy to like see it come to life. So I'm like, are people gonna come? Like we did so much turnout and like, uh, it's I mean, obviously it's still too early to tell so I'm just kind of jittery but I'm, I'm feeling good. I mean, it's manifesting, I'm just, you know, nervous. We are here at the first ever Youth Climate March on DC in our nation's history. <laughs> However, Youth all around the world have been marching for a lot longer than this. Youth, especially youth of color, indigenous youth, have been raising their voices for climate justice longer than we can count. I stand for environmental justice. I stand for environmental justice. I stand for transformative justice. I stand for transformative justice. I stand for a just transition. I stand for a just transition. Because we are one. Because we are one. Because this is zero hour. What time is it? Zero hour. What time is it? Zero hour. Let's make everyone on Capitol Hill, the leaders, listen to us. What time is it? Zero hour. Everything I was scared of happening happened, but it was still an historic action, and we had the solidarity of sister marches all around the world. Like, it would have been nice, I'm not lying. I would have liked more people to be there. Was that feasible with the stormy weather? No. It had the impact that we wanted it to have all along. I think being persistent probably was the key to the success here. It would have been easy to give up many times on the way. I, I just felt really happy about it. I almost wanted to cry. <laughs> but as a guy, I can't cry. <laughs> <laughs> going forward, we're going to continue with different education campaigns. We want youth talking to politicians, lobbying, going to town halls, and the Global Climate Action Summit, the People's Climate March. I'm going to the summit. Some people on the East Coast are going to be speaking on some East Coast events. We have notoriety. We have more resources. Obviously, we're still the underdogs, and we're still a bunch of broke high schoolers, but we have so much more than we did last year. It was like stupid perseverance and i know you like wanted to like take a break after the march for yeah things slightly that was like one week of watching shows and half-ass breaking so it didn't really happen <laughs> i sustained myself i mean i've been trying with school i have my group of weirdos that i hang out with i always feel like i'm on the edge of burnout and like one more thing and i'm gonna collapse um so that's not a good place to be so I'm trying to like take care of myself a little more and take a little more time to like hang out with friends and in terms of my angsty teen idyllic summer there are some things that I just have to accept that there aren't enough hours in the day for like I'll hang out with my friends but I can't go out and do something like fun that often like and maybe I'll go to like a concert a year but yeah. We're attacking this issue at every possible angle we can electoral legislative, the courts, grassroots organizing, mobilizations, 
because we have to take down this beast, so we have to like fight it at all sides. Do you have any probably final thoughts? No, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I think we covered it. Yeah. <laughs> good night. Good night. <laughs>